Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Olga's Way podcast. I am here today with Ashley Sear, who is the owner of Private Eye Investigations, a company she founded in 2015. And prior to that, she had a very comfy, in her own words, federal government job, which affected her happiness. And that's why I wanted to talk to her, because she went from a job that she felt safe um, in terms of... um, benefits and permanency, but where she wasn't that happy to opening her own uh, private investigation company and succeeding. Since then, she's been nominated for several awards and she has been uh, published in all sorts of magazine, journals, television, radio, etc. She is a mentor at the Telfer Business program at Ottawa University. She is also a mentor in high schools and she's a mom of one tiny little baby, eight weeks old, who she's holding in her arms right as we speak. So she's a uh, truthful entrepreneur that hasn't stopped working. Um, Even though she is a new mom, she hasn't stopped caring for her business and she's been so thankful to be uh, or, or generous with her time that she's actually agreeing to be interviewed in this podcast just to share her story with all of us. So thank you, Ashley, and welcome to the podcast. Thank you. And he's so cute. I wish you guys could see him. He's a tiny little cute baby. <laughs> thank you. I hope he's not too distracting. <laughs> <laughs> they can see him. I'll just be the only one who's distracting, distracted by him. <laughs> So, Ashley, thank you so much for being here. I was hoping you could walk us through just a little bit of your upbringing uh, and why, you know, how did you end up opening your own business? What brought you there? Because I'm I'm looking at you, you look very young. So you've accomplished a lot in what seems to not be a lot of a lot of years. So tell us a little bit about that. How did you get there? Um, Well, I was raised by... Well, my father was an entrepreneur, so I had that kind of instilled in me in a young age, knowing that you don't necessarily have to, you know, do post-secondary and um, get a really expensive job and or a job that you get paid a lot, so on and so forth. You can work for yourself. You can do hands-on jobs. You can, you know, um, you can find value in different types of work and not necessarily work for somebody else and find happiness doing that, that as well. And then um, I was also raised in the intelligence environment. So the very need to know kind of world, a lot of secrecy, um, (laughs) kind of like what you would see on like James Bond and stuff. (laughs) So then that was always a peak of interest. That was the unknown. We all love the unknown because it's like, it's mystery, right? So I think that kind of is what brought me into wanting to be a PI because it's very similar to that realm and that industry. So when you say Um, PI, you mean private investigator, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Um, But I never really planned until it kind of just happened. So I did a lot of uh, work in private security. I worked as a... um, a loss prevention officer and then I worked for a prison guard in the Northwest Northwest Territories for the RCMP. Um, I've done a lot of background checks and stuff in reference for a secret service. So there's a lot of um, that type of work that I've done, but all for federal agencies. And then I worked for the federal government still for quite a few years. I did leave to travel for two years. And then when I came back, I went right back into the government. And then when um, when I realized that, you know, at the age of 23, I had already gone through a burnout. Um, I was experiencing anxiety, which I had never known. Uh, I didn't even know it was a thing, right? I, I didn't know what feeling nervous really meant. Um, and then experiencing panic attacks for the first time. And it all kind of boiled down to work. I noticed that it was a trigger going into work, dealing with the traffic every day, dealing with, you know, the elevators up to the 20 something floor, everything, just every little thing. And then it was tedious work. It was repetitive every day. And it's, you're a number. 
And you learn that really quickly in the government too. You're replaceable. No matter how much knowledge you have, you are 100% replaceable. And I hated that feeling. So after my second burnout, and which I deemed it would have it would be my last burnout, I took a medical leave of absence, um, not by choice. <laughs> and um, during that absence, I kind of learned how to how to take a step back. And I decided, okay, I need to do groundwork again. I need to figure out me, what makes me happy, what I'm passionate about, because I didn't know. I didn't know any of that anymore. And uh, one of my girlfriends and I had coffee, and she was telling me about how her father hired a private investigator for their company and how I would be just amazing at it because of my analytical skills and all that kind of stuff. And I started laughing because I didn't know PIs actually existed. I thought it was very much a Hollywood thing. <laughs> so um, I looked into it because at that point I was debating what to do next. I knew I didn't want to go back to the federal government. So I was just waiting for my leave of absence to end before I literally retire from the federal government. <laughs> and, at the age um, of 23. At the age of 23, yeah. <laughs> it was good. Um, and so I looked into it and... The course is cheap to take for a license and it's not very long. So I'm like, oh, why not? Let's just take the course. Let's just get licensed and see where, where it takes me. Um, and then so I did. I got licensed and but then nobody was hiring. And I couldn't understand why considering Ottawa were the nation's capital and all of the private investigation companies that at the time were very small, very minimal, and not out there. So nobody really knew what a PI did or how to find them and all that kind of stuff. And that really bothered me. <laughs> and um, so I just said, screw it. If there's not a job there for me, I'm going to create one. And I did. And uh, it's been one heck of a journey ever since. There's no looking back. And it's, it's, well, it is the most successful PI agency now, um, and it has been since the first year I was, I've was i been in business. Which is impressive on its own, because yeah. you were a very young entrepreneur. I was the youngest female, um, well, the youngest national, nationally recognized PI agency owner at the time, and um, one of very few female agency owners as well, which is... That's amazing. All power to you and to all the yeah. females listening to this podcast. So, Ashley, I just want to go back to your burnouts uh, because a lot of my clients experience burnouts. There might be people listening to us right now, talk, uh, hearing you talk about burnout. And the thing about going through a burnout, because I personally went through one myself and I told myself, make this the last one ever. Uh, yeah. When you're in a burnout, you really feel that you're, there is no way out of the burnout. While you're in it, it feels like this is going to take, I, I don't know. I, I remember thinking it's impossible to get out of this one. Like, I don't know what's going to take for me to come out of this burnout. Um, and I know burnout can be different for everybody and the intensity of it. But you went through two seems seems to be really close one after the other. Um, within, within a year. Within a year, you had two burnouts, which is so significant for the mind and the body. So what helped you get out of there? What do you, like, if you can go back in time and kind of think of our listeners that might be listening to you, like you obviously made it, <laughs> you got out of there. What was helpful to you at the time? Um, well, at my second, so the second burnout I had, I had a really rude awakening from my doctor, to be fully honest. And he point blank said, if you want to see the age of 30, you need to smarten up. You need to realize what positive stresses are and what negative stresses are and what's important for you in order to release that, not be so stressed out, essentially, because yeah. now I was stressing myself out for something that didn't bring me any joy except a paycheck, right? Hmm. So I was working around the clock. I was doing overtime that I wasn't paid for. I was taking on extra responsibilities that I didn't have to, that I wasn't going to be recognized for down the road either. So I kind of just had to realize that money 
isn't that important when you compare that to your mental health. And so I, <laughs> I decided to say, um, you know, screw the paycheck. I want to be happy. Yeah, I know. Okay, people are going to say money doesn't buy you happiness. And I'm not fully, I don't fully agree with that because let's face it, if you're broke, that's a whole other type of stress, right? Like right. there's, there's got to be a balance. I don't say quit your job and, and do nothing. Like, no, you still got to find some yeah. sort of way of living. But at the same time, don't lose your sanity over something just because there's a dollar sign at the end of it. I agree. And that's exactly what I was doing. So, so okay, so uh, a, an awakening moment from somebody who was brutally honest with you and basically told you, even though you're so young, you know, this could kill you eventually. <laughs> like, you know, yeah. uh, the level of stress that you were having, obviously, were, was having a huge, big enough impact. Um, and so that helped you kind of rethink. Was there anything else that you think, how did you get to choose being happy? Because when you're burning out, sometimes you take responsibility, like something's wrong with you. And so you're trying to fix that first. You recognize the trigger was work. But was there anything that you feel was extremely helpful in helping you be uh, courageous? Um. I was definitely, when you're going through a burnout, well, for myself anyways, you hit a depressive state of mind. Nothing makes you happy. Uh, you don't even want to get out of bed. You don't want to get dressed. You don't want to shower. As a woman, you don't want to do your hair or even put on makeup. You really, you feel isolated. You don't want to see anybody. And the last thing you think about essentially is yourself. So I had to try to snap out of that as much as possible. And that's hard, but I had to write a schedule. And on my wall, I had a, um, a whiteboard, a tiny little whiteboard. And on the whiteboard every day before going to bed, I would write a goal for the next day. So it could be as simple as do laundry, you know, like at first, like little steps just to get out of bed and go and feel accomplished by the end of the day. That's awesome. It, yeah. I love well, that it idea. It really worked. Yeah. And then eventually it would be, you know, two or three goals and then four goals. And the next thing you know, I didn't need to write anything because I had a routine scheduled back but it was a routine that I enjoyed. So for me, I was lucky. It was during the summer that I took off. So my routine included getting up, getting ready, eating, going to the beach or park and reading by myself. So I ended up doing that. And then every night I would journal. So I would write what my experiences were during the day, how I would feel, and then also what would make me happy. And then I would try to figure that out, which a lot of times I must say was a very empty part of my journal because I didn't know. But while reading, and I read a lot of books that summer, I read a lot about, you know, the the human body, the feelings, the what anxiety is, what depression is, what a burnout is, everything. And I think that knowledge is power because truly it helped me open my eyes and know me. So now I know myself better than I ever have. And I know my triggers. I know, you know, okay, now I should probably take a step back. I'm getting a little too tired or, you know, little things like that. And um, that's something that I can take with me for the rest of my life. And especially now that, you know, I do own a business. I, I actually own three now. And I am, I'm, I'm a, a, you know, a new mom <laughs> and I have employees. I have a lot more things that should stress you out. Yeah. But I'm probably at the most calm stage of my life than I've ever been thanks to that moment of going through a burnout and taking the time to learn about your mind and relaxation and what to do and it's not afraid don't be afraid to reach out like I actually sought out help I spoke to a shrink I did everything I needed to do for me not to feel the way I felt during that burnout again right yeah for anybody who has never experienced a burnout it's a scary it's a scary feeling and there are levels to burnouts uh you could have emotional burnout not all burnouts come from uh work or your career a lot of times just from being a caregiver and just being exhausted of helping people that could give you a burnout could be from a bad relationship burnout can come from anywhere and it's basically you have over exhausted yourself mentally and physically because you've given too much if you guys listen to what ashley was saying she was working extra hours and not getting paid that's not a fair exchange that's just giving giving not receiving she she had these high expectations of of herself in this job where she was giving so much and 
nothing ever seems to be enough. That's kind of like the mind frame that gets you into trouble when you don't know to say no, when you don't know to set those boundaries. I absolutely love that without me asking Ashley, she actually went into journaling, which is something that I suggest to all my clients to do, um, movement, doing things that make you happy. You cannot underestimate how doing things that make you happy can actually help you feel better. And just like you said, find yourself is by connecting with the the activities that make our soul really happy that we can kind of find home again. Um, Ashley, so, so you went from that burnout to your friend saying like, you'd be great at this because a lot of my clients struggle, but I don't know what my passion is. And I love that you didn't even know either. Somebody suggested it to you and you're like, well, what the heck? I'm just going to look into it. And you end up opening uh, one of the best or the best private investigation companies. So um, how do you feel about that? <laughs> uh, great. <laughs> like, there's really nothing bad to say about it, but it wasn't easy, obviously. Um, and I, there's, there was a lot of, uh, I got a lot of... <sighs> I don't even know how to say that properly. I got discriminated a lot about the fact that I was so young, that I was not ex-police or ex-military, and the fact that I'm a female. Hmm. Like people used to call me, uh, call my business line and ask if I was a secretary. <laughs> so it was like little things like that, that um, it gets to you, but at the same time, it motivates you. So I think it really depends on how you take, um, uh, take the criticism. So it's just, what's your expectations? Don't do what other people expect. Just do what, what works for you. Ashley, and for those listening who may have a business or who may be thinking about opening a business, why do you think you were so successful in this business? What what do you think made you be the best? Um, my drive, my determination. I had really no choice to succeed. Um, I didn't want to go back to working in the get government for me that was the last resort it was i would rather work three part-time jobs than go back into what made me sick i already know that doesn't work for me i already know that's not my happiness um and i don't care about the benefits and about you know all of this other stuff i just wanted to make sure that you know you work for your entire life so I wanted to make sure that my life is something that I would look back on one day and be proud of. So essentially that's why it worked. But I had also just had gotten my dog as a puppy. So he was seven weeks. So for me, it was, I need to make sure that I could feed him, that I can pay his vet bills, that I can keep a head, like a roof over his head. It, it was my baby, right? My first baby. <laughs> So it was, uh, and here's baby number two saying, what did you just say? I'm your <laughs> only baby. And not so happy one right now, but it was, and it was my determination and my drive and my focus. And I think that's what everybody needs when they're starting a business. It's really focusing on what are your goals? Why are you doing it? And is it for you? Because if it's really not for you and if it's just a hobby, then don't get your hobby confused with your business. Because sometimes, and a lot of people do that. They'll be like, oh, um, I love cooking. I yeah. I love cooking. Yeah. It's a passion and it's fun and I like doing it. I'm going to open it as a business. Sometimes it's really successful. Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong. But a lot of times, it's, if it's something that you enjoy doing just for fun, to keep yourself, you know, to, to de-stress yourself or whatever, and you try to open that into a business, chances are it, it won't work because for you, you're going to make your hobby, your passion is going to become a reason for stress mm -hmm. because now you're going to notice how hard it is to actually get clients, how expensive it is to actually run when you're going to need employees and you're looking at a whole, you know, so but I was ready for that because it wasn't a hobby and I didn't know it was a passion at the time. Right. And so it, it kind of, you discovered a passion by the suggestion of somebody else, which I love for people to hear this because I, I, I spent hours with some of my clients just 
trying to make them understand that y- your passion sometimes is not so evident when people get really discouraged like well at least you were born being good at that Olga so of course you know what your passion is right like but it wasn't always this way I never I not not always not always did I know that this was going to be my passion either Ashley exactly I have a question honestly go ahead I honestly thought I was going to be in the federal government for the rest of my life because it's one, we're in Ottawa, right? Right. It's it's a very government fixated town, but then it's also, I was good at it. Like like I was really good at my job and I was going really up (laughs) way too fast, which is why I burnt out. Right. For me, I was just like, I'm going to retire with this. I'm going to retire with a nice pension. I'm going to do this and that. And now it's just, Oh, now it's just, no, I'm going to do the complete opposite. And thanks to my friend, because if I would not have had that conversation, I don't know what I'd be doing right now. And if you had not been open to look into it, like we have great exactly. conversations with people all the time, but not always are we open to listen to what they have to say. Maybe, maybe look into it. Ashley, I know you're busy and these little guys probably want to have a diaper change soon, but uh could you leave us with what has been the most effective way for you to manage your stress? Because you now own three business. You, yeah. we, were, we were speaking before we started recording. You're not taking mat leave and you gave birth two months ago. And that's just a reality sometimes of being self-employed. And yeah. you said that you are, are your calmest and most uh, confident with how you manage your time and your stress. Please share some light with all of us. <laughs> oh, um, <laughs> I don't let my emotions get the best of me now, which I think is what's really important. So if something is stressing me out, I, I take a step back and then I analyze why it's stressing me and how to get over it. So I don't procrastinate anymore, which was a huge default of mine. And how did you get there? How did you stop procrastinating? <laughs> Um, well, honestly, when I started writing and it's not like to do lists because let's, let's face it. As soon as you write a to do list, that list gets twice as long before the day ends and you haven't touched it, Yeah. but I write goals instead and they're achievable. It's maybe one thing or three things to do. And I'm very schedule oriented now. So, and delegating to any business owners out there, you need to delegate. (laughs) And it's Um, hard. Oh, but but also, I think for any moms out there, delegating, for any women out there, delegating. Delegate to your husband. Delegate to other people the oh, things that you absolutely feel that you have to do. Since being a mom, too, um, that's one thing. And I'm one of those people, which probably half of the individuals listening to this, I can't ask for help. I never was able to ask for help. I'm very, I don't know if it's pride. I don't know if it's just being a woman. Um, but very type A personality and I can do it myself. Right. You know? Yeah. But since being a mom and trying to manage this three jobs, my schedule just got a, a lot shorter, <laughs> right? Like I don't have as many hours in a day anymore. So I ask for help now because I don't have a choice. So it's, you know, which family member can watch the little one once a week so that I can work that much more that day. Or, um, you know, if it's, If it's needing to get a house cleaner, if it's needing to hire a personal chef to do your meal prep for a month, whatever it is, that one little thing that's going to help you save time, stay healthy and whatever, um, do it. You know what I mean? It, the benefit of it is so much better. And that's what my, my husband and I are learning and we're taking advantage of as much as we can because he is also a business owner. So we're, we, we have the same mentality when it comes to what and how can we possibly make our lives easier, regardless of the circumstances. Mm-hmm. So I love that. I say this to my clients often. This is amazing. It's like I had to pay you to tell my clients what I tell them to. Uh, make your life easier. I really think that that's a huge stress uh, reliever, which is trying to find ways in which your life can be easier, whether that is asking for help, hiring help, just how can you make life easier? You do not need to prove to anybody that that you're awesome because you are awesome and you're superwoman and you can do everything you want. 
But have people help you. If I didn't have somebody cleaning my house, I wouldn't do as much. If I didn't have somebody cooking, like my husband, cooking my suppers, I wouldn't be able to work as late as I do teaching to you guys, right? Like, so it's finding those people that can help you, whether you're paying them or they're just part of your family and you're asking for that assistance. And I love that as a new mom, you're not putting that stress on you. I've got to cook, I've got to clean, I've got to feed the baby and I've got to work. You know, it's, you would have gone into another burnout for sure had you had that attitude. So that's awesome. And especially as a new mom, like as any woman that has kids or that's planning on having kids, postpartum is just too real. And I knew that, and that could still hit me anytime, but um, running my businesses, having employee, like having that much more needing me to be healthy and in a good state of mind. That's why we, from the get-go, are like, okay, what can we do to make things good for me? Mm-hmm. Because the baby's going to be good no matter what. My husband's going to be happy no matter what. But the priority is to make sure that I was good so that I can keep, you know, I can take care of my son and I can take care of the house and I can take care of the businesses. I can still do everything. But I don't need to, you know, like, yeah. you don't need to spread your thin, yourself thin. No. there, There's... Outsource, man, outsourcing little things yeah. from your personal life. Yeah, I Amazing. agree. I agree. Uh, last but not least, tell me a little bit more about private eye investigations. People listening to you, uh, I personally never even thought of hiring a private investigator. When would I need that? Uh, need one? <laughs> and why would I need one? Like a regular human being like myself, what do you think we could uh, use your services for? Well, it's probably a good thing that you've never had to think about hiring one of us. (laughs) Um, I applaud you on that one. Um, Well, the typical that you'll you'll hear about is infidelity. That's a big one. But we deal a lot with divorce cases, custody battle cases as well. We do a lot of criminal cases like murder trials and all that kind of stuff. Um, For lawyers, we'll serve papers, we'll uh, get statements and interview and interrogate We'll do background checks and um, investigate corporations. We do a lot. There's there's really not much we don't. Missing persons is big too. Okay. Like finding their biological family somewhere. Oh, or I love that. Love. Mm-hmm. Um, we have a lot of long lost loves around oh. this time. Oh, <laughs> really special. So um, we do a lot. <laughs> yeah. So basically, we- you find any information people are lacking. Yeah, and what people think that they're hiding, they're not. <laughs> That's hilarious. So, yeah, to all of you listening, if you think you're hiding something, you <laughs> are not. You heard Ashley <laughs> on her private eye investigations. Ashley, where can people find you? Um, we have Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram. It's all Private Eye Ottawa. Um, the website is also www.privateeyeottawa.com. The business name is Private Eye Investigations. We're also on Google and just about anywhere else you can imagine. You are awesome. I uh, admire you as a woman, as an entrepreneur, and as a mom to be. I take my hat off to you. I think it's amazing to see how balanced you've kept your life, how you took a difficult life scenario like it is to burn out. And that it's amazing that you were so young, yet you had the ability to be like, I'm not going to stay here forever. Let me plan. And that you had the courage to follow your heart and your soul. And clearly you did that because success doesn't come from going against what our heart wants and what we're really intended to do. So um, that little guy you're holding is super lucky to have you as a mom and for yeah. us, the Ottawa community, to just like, I feel super proud that you are part of this community and that you are as successful as you are. May I never need your services? <laughs> uh, I'm joking. And for anybody really listening to us right now, if you think that you can use a private investigator, think of Ashley's company because you heard her story. She's awesome, she's a hard worker woman. And uh, she's got a lot of wisdom, not just how to find people or information. She simply has a lot of wisdom. So from my heart to yours, thank you so much, Ashley, for being in this interview. Um, in spite of having a little guy who was hungry and cranky at times. And we'll thank you. What's his name? Thomas. Thomas. Beautiful name. Thank you, Thomas, for lending us your mom for a little bit. You're awesome, too. 
Thank you very much. And thanks for having me on here. <laughs> Thank you.